Hey, people, Zarth Mom here, and welcome to episode 43 of the Greatest Attorney 2 Resolve. Last time, we brought Madame Two Spells to the stand, and basically, we're hearing about how she went about constructing the waxwork for the professor, and it was discovered that basically, how what she was finding with rigor mortis not setting in, it goes against what was stated in the autopsy report. So, let's do this. Let's go on to further details. Let's go down the rabbit hole. I believe it's because your testimony and particular detail in the report completely contradict one another. What? Are you going to explain yourself, my Nipponis friend? According to her testimony, Madame Two Spells was creating her waxwork impression just before dawn, and at that time, rigor mortis had not yet set in. Am I correct so far, Madame? You are, yes. As I said, the deepening of the jaw is the first sign of rigor mortis two or three hours after death. But the man's chin was limp, so he could not have been dead for a very long time. But on the other hand, if you look at Dr. Sy's report, it quite clearly states the following. Death by hanging confirmed at midnight, 17th of June. No! If the professor indeed died at midnight that day, then by the time you were sculpting his face, Rigor Morse would have already have said it. Why, we, yes, you are right. The gin, it would have been completely stiff. In other words, this report was wrong. Objection. No coroner makes mistakes when recording the time of death. The very idea is absurd. In that case, there's only one possible conclusion. The, ex the execution didn't actually take place at the state of time. I'm in. Possible! Ah, now I actually hit my headphone. Order, order! Council, this is beyond folly. Not only do you indict the, the author of the reward, Dr. Scythe, but you also implicate members of staff at, at Barclay Prison where, where the execution took place? By heck! Extraordinary! I'm right, yeah. My learned friend appears to have overlooked one very crucial fact. What fact? The professor died that night, without question. He did, of course he did. I moved the man's limp jaw with my own hands. There was no... Yes, the professor died that night. But what if he didn't die at the gallows? Didn't die at... Are you insane? What? What exactly are you suggesting did happen in that case? It's almost impossible to believe, but it would explain the link between Dr. Scythe and the professor and the one other person of interest. I have evidence that will explain exactly what I'm suggesting happened that night. Counsel, present the evidence at once. The evidence that allegedly explains what really happened on the night of the professor's execution. What happened that night is written very plainly in this newspaper article. Executed criminal returns to the dead of the night at local cemetery. You're suggesting it was a corpse coming back from the dead now? Really? What next? What next? You're gonna say vampires exist? And before you make the comparison, I am not a vampire. Well, if this article is to be believed, yes. The professor, assumed dead following his execution, emerged from his grave and was killed again. Objection! Don't be a fool! That's simply a rumor published by the Gutter Press! Can you be certain of that? Are you serious? The point is, as the article says, there was a witness to what happened. My word, yes indeed! Miss Nui! The young man who stole the cemetery by chance that night. Objection! Of course there was a witness. The story didn't write itself, but obviously the man made it all up. And in any case, this was ten years ago now. There would surely be no hope of finding Objection. him. On the contrary, my lord. We all know this witness well. What? Are you suggesting, counsel, that you've identified the person in question? That you know who claims to have seen these utterly incredible events take place? Yes, my lord. In fact, you could say that he's right here before my very eyes. You will tr substantiate your latest claim now, then, counsel. Who is this alleged witness of the staggering scene with the s from the cemetery ten years ago? It's Van Zeke's assistant, masked man! 
No, it's Got. It's Bohemian Boy. It's not even Got. He's just Bohemian Boy. It's Gregson. No, no, no. It's Gina. No, Iris. Iris is behind it all. No, no. We're missing the true profile. We're missing Ido's profile. Take that. The man in question is Mr. Enoch Drebber. Drebber? The, the previous witness? The special exhibit in the House of Horrors at Madame Fuji Spell's Museum of Waxwork recreates the decade old scene in great detail. The condemned criminal emerging from the grave, and besides the tomb, a young man with a lantern stumbling upon a terrifying sight. And that young man is a 10 year younger Mr. Enoch Drebber. Order, order, order! Surely not, Council. Trevor was there in Lowgate Cemetery? Um, what is all this talk about Mr. Trevor? Is the name significant? Of course, Madame Two Spells doesn't know, does she? Yes, it's extremely significant. Madame, to your situation as well, in fact. What situation? The theft of the Professor Waxwork from your museum some days ago was perpetrated by the very same man. No! But, but that would mean... Madame du Spells, it would appear you know the name Enoch Drebber. Oui, yes, I know it. But from long ago in the past. What? Oh my! Good gracious! Explain yourself! Tell us everything you know! Yes, yes, of course. The story of the young man and the terrible sight he witnessed in the cemetery ten years ago was published in every single newspaper in London and throughout Great Britain. However, in all of the articles, the witness was simply described as a certain young man. No details were published about his identity. His name was never revealed. That is, apart from in one newspaper. In the Anisagas, it is a paper from which comes the article I have already shown in court. The Daily Circus, i.e. the name of what, a perfect summation of what goes on when my learned Nipponese friend defends a, a, a client, a defendant. You're saying that his full name was only published in this article. Goodness me, yes, there it is. The university student with who experienced this shocking event is Mr. Enoch Trevor. A disciple of science at the University of London and a resident of its student dorms. Unbelievable. When I read this article, I went to meet with the man. His discovery of the condemned criminal coming back to life in the cemetery in the dead of night would make a perfect exhibit for my house of horrors, whether it was true or not. I see. So you went to meet Mr. Drever in order to sculpt the waxwork of the man, did you? Excellent, exact amount. He was studying science at the University of London in those days. He was just a poor student. I paid him five pounds to model for the waxwork, and then an extra five pounds to star in a video that I recorded, a very adult video. And at that time, it has been in my museum to recreate the scene of terror from the cemetery. And in the room next door, a waxwork depicting what I had him do with a waxwork of Vlad the Appeller. So, 10 years ago, a young man appeared, appealed to the public about, about an extraordinary event he'd witnessed. A criminal who had been put to death, re-emerging from his grave in the middle of the night. 
but the Pratt public treated his claim as nothing more than an amusing antidote that was soon forgotten. Ten years later, the same man steals a waxwork model of the, ex the executed criminal, ostensibly to use as a bido for the victim in a case we are discussing here today. Even though the waxwork's build is a poor match for the victim, and its face is obscured by a mask. So the question is, why would the man do such a thing? Which brings us to the three day to three days ago, when the birdcage crashed into the crystal tower. If the birdcage had in fact contained not only the body of Mr. Assman, but the same waxwork, the coroner from Scotland Yard who investigated Dr. Scythe would have noticed immediately. And yet, she submitted this autopsy report for the victim, which the court has seen earlier. Why? Because the waxwork was not the professor. Is that what you're saying? Dr. Scythe put her name onto a document confirming the death of a condemned criminal who was still alive. A criminal whose apparent resurrection was witnessed by Mr. Drever. But that misconduct was a deadly secret the coroner would do anything to protect. Which is precisely why Mr. Drever used that particular waxwork as the body double. Ah! My lord, this court must summon Dr. Scythe to the stand. The defense is determined. To find out exactly how the coroner and Mr. Drebber are connected. But according to the mass, mass missive I've received this morning through the prosecutor's office, Dr. Scythe is unable to participate in these proceedings. Is that not the case? She told us her herself, didn't she? Lord Van Zeeks won't be summoning me as a witness. Lord Strongheart has forbidden it. Lord Strongheart? The Pandora's box you were warned about is the Professor case. But please don't make the mistake of thinking you'll get any information out of me. Something happened on that night of the killer... Uh, something happened on the night of that killer's execution ten years ago. And surely nobody would want to get to the bottom of that more than Lord Van Zeeks. I fear nothing. I have a mullet. I have nothing to lose. The prosecution calls for the instructions on the instructions in that massive to be scrapped. In that missive. But, but Lord Van Zeeks, the missive was issued from the Lord Chief Justice's office. Objection. The assigned prosecutor has the final say on policy in any particular trial. And frankly, as if Lord, as if Lord Strongheart, he consults me about stuff. If he consulted me about stuff, I wouldn't be having that my learned Nibonese friend in these trials. I would be saying to him, "No, you are not to let him defend in this trial. I want a normal trial for once." In other words, me. Yes. Let Enoch Drever and Doctor Scythe both take the stand together. Order, order, order! Very well, I will uphold your request. Bailiff, send a result Panina with the immediate effect. Address to Dr. Scythe of the forensics investigation team. The woman is compelled to attend on Her Majesty's orders. All right then, Enoch Drebber and Dr. Scythe. That if they weren't colluding with one another, this crime could never have been committed. I'm just a stone's throw away. I can feel it. The truth behind all of this is about to come out. Thank you for your for your attendance at such no short notice, Doctor Sight. I'm disappointed in you, Lord Van Zeeks. You've completely betrayed the agreed policy of both Scotland Yard and the prosecutor's office. Betrayal is not in my nature, as long as the truth isn't compromised. If it is, if there's even a hint of wrongdoing, then there's no matter who then no matter who may concern to disgruntles. I will pursue the matter to the bitter end, as would any prosecutor worth his salt. Mr. Trevor, you took the victim's life by means of a machine that you constructed in your workshop. And Dr. Scythe, as the investigative coroner, you were the first on the scene to examine the victim's body. It is the belief of the defense 
And you collaborated with each other and were both complicit in the crime. And where's your evidence? At present, we have no definitive evidence, but we do have a very significant clue. What are you talking about? I'm talking about, of course, about the waxwork. The model the killer knows the professor, who was sentenced to death 10 years ago. You don't need to tell me. I witnessed the man's execution with my own eyes and officially pronounced him dead. That remains to be seen. Is that so? According to this newspaper report from the time, on the night following the execution, the killer came back to life. Don't waste my time. And the sole witness to that mysterious event was you, Mr. Drever, wasn't it? If what you saw in the graveyard that night 10 years ago wasn't some chilling fiction, but reality, it'd make you privy to a very great secret of Dr. Sites. A secret so profound it could compel the coroner to agree to collaborate in your evil scheme, in fact. Mr. Drebber, tell the court, tell everyone the truth of what you saw that night in the Lowgate Cemetery. No. I despise you all. Cut, cut, cut. The gallery gossips about me. I will destroy them all with my laser eye. What an interesting twist. One at the time, not one person would take me seriously. Yet now here we are, ten years later, and suddenly my story matters. And in a court of law too. Very well then, if everyone so wishes. Let's be frank, I'll tell you the truth of what happened that night, for what it's worth. Listen to this theme, Dr. Scythe. Listen to this theme. It is badass. It is epic. It shows it shows initiative. What is your theme? It's like some da 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 da. What even is this? Is it is it poetry night at the at the tea house? So, Mr. Trevor, your testimony, please, about the events of that night, ten years ago. You will tell the court exactly what you stumbled across in Logan Cemetery. Yes, of course, as you wish. The reason I was in Logan Cemetery all those all ten years at all ten years ago was for a spot of moonlighting, shall we say. Yes, the illustration in that newspaper article was based on what I witnessed that night. But thinking back now, I realized that I never actually saw the professor. Soon afterwards, I was visited by a young woman who sculpted a model of me from wax. Then I gave up my dream of becoming a scientist, and it was all because of that newspaper article. Wait a minute! You're... you're claiming you didn't actually see the professor now. Of course, you'd have to have a screw loose if you believe the corpse could come back from the dead. But, so you're saying this article is... Not what the paper it's printed on? I think that would describe it perfectly, that, yes. Ah! If that detail in the articles aren't true, it nullifies your argument for why Mr. Trevor and Dr. Scythe have been working together. So he's discrediting himself to cripple my argument. Tell me, witness. You claim to have been in the cemetery on some auxiliary business. Can you elaborate? That night, grave robbing to be precise. As you know, Lowgate Cemetery is at the rear of Barclay Prison. So among students at the university, it a, a reputation of being haunted by ghosts of condemned crim convicts. Grave robbing, you say? Yes, exterminating fresh corpses to sell is reasonably lucrative. Of course, I never laid a finger on any valuables buried with the dead. So you were one of, so you were one of the so-called resurrectionists, a particularly unpleasant scourge on society. 
actually, my fellows and I went by another name. The Repurposers. That, that, that is quite beyond the pale. You would invite divine retribution, sir. Yes, well, I think I severed retribution enough. The Daily Circus eventually unearthed my name and put it into print. It caused me a great many headaches. In the end, I had to leave the university. That was the only paper with the bad grace to identify me unambiguously, might I add. I see. Out of interest, who drew the illustration for the article? Ah, yes. That was the reporter who exposed me. He sketched that right in front of me as I described the scene. Although, frankly, I find it to be unflattering. It makes me look like I have lockjaw. Look at that. It, it, shows, it makes me look so bland. Oh, yes, man. He was ruining my day. It made it look like I was being harassed by some skeleton zombie. Obviously, at the, as time tickled on, I bitterly regretted what I had done. Claiming to have seen something I never truly saw. Foolish. Very foolish. Hmm. Well, counsel for the defense. You may proceed to the cross-examination now. At once, my lord. Okay, this one I remember because it is... It's... It's an odd one in terms of just the sequence of that of which things go on. Basically, you gotta go. Okay. Basically, you gotta go this statement here, and the reason for that is because, given the secrecy of the trial, it could not he could not have seen the mask otherwise. Objection. Sorry, Mr. Drummer, but I don't believe that. Don't believe what? Your latest claim, you did see the professor that night, 10 years ago. Oh dear, we seem to be at odds, but I was there, and you were not. I know what I didn't see. The illustration with this article was drawn based on what you told the journals that you witnessed. A figure emerging from a tomb, wearing an iron mask. Yes, when the killer was tried 10 years ago. It was decided in the closed court's ruling that the man would wear the mask to hide his identity. It wasn't to be removed, even during his execution and subsequent burial. Not even the prison wards were to see the man's face. But obviously, the provision of this mask was now public knowledge. So, Mr. Drebber, as you've just heard... Ah! A lowly student of the University of London certainly wouldn't have known about the condemned man's mask. So unless you'd actually seen the professor that night, it's an inconceivable that the arse would have included the mask in that illustration. Ah! Order, order! Well, Mr. Trevor. It's a vile scene, isn't it? If you look closely. And as I've already been at pains to point out, I was utterly petrified. Which is why I had it in my head that I had seen such a blood-curdling sight. But afterwards, I came to my senses and realized that I'd, be, I'd been mistaken. You, you're saying, still saying that you didn't see it? If you're stubbornly sticking to that story, witness. Then amend your testimony to explain exactly how you think your eyes deceived you. Of course, of course. Only too happy to oblige. I can't believe he's still not going to concede this point. What I in fact witnessed it was a fellow grave robber at work. Da 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 da. Hold it! Yeah, I think you have to press this one. Fellow grave robber, what are you talking about? Well, I was not I wasn't the only one busy in the cemetery that night. You know, other body snatchers were at work. Of course, when I saw one emerging from the hole he dug, my heart very nearly stopped. So that's the terrifying sight I actually saw, you see. 
You're claiming it was just another student on equally insalubrious business for us yourself? Then the other medical students would wear metal masks to protect them from bacteria during dissections. Clearly the fellow was using such a mask to protect his an anonymity, would you say? Objection! But there's more to the story, isn't there? The article goes on to say, In the next second, a gunshot rang out suddenly from behind. The bullet pierced the resurrected man's chest, whose breath then stilled once more. We might assume that the sec sectant discovered the miscreants at war props and fired upon one of them. In a, if a grave digger had shot someone in a cemetery, I think it might have been rather big news, my lord. Ah, yes, well, I can only assume it was an embellishment bolted on later by the reporter. Excuse me. Sure enough, we gotta present, press this one now. Madame Two Spells, don't take it out on Mr. Sholmes. And if you do, take it out on the real one in the gallery. Oh la la, pardon. I was lost in my thoughts. Would it be fair to say that Mr. Trevor's last remark was significant to you in some way? I thought it was a little strange, that is all. How Monsieur Trevor could claim this now? If you don't mind me saying, madame, what are you talking about? Well, when I met you ten years ago at your university dormitory, you recounted to me about your adventures in the cemetery, no, and about that strange homeless guy who tried to stab you, and about the guy who threw a shoe at you, including the gunshot. Stop! You might want to watch your tongue, you know. Objection! Have a care, Trevor! That's no way to speak to a lady! Van Zeeks is a tear in the rank of gentlemen. He's in Professor Layton's League. That's why he wore a top at it in his one newspaper article. He solves puzzles in his free time. <laughs> Please, Madame Two Spells, carry on. Of course! According to what Monsieur Trevor told me at the time, he actually did your gunshot from behind him, and the bullet hit the condemned man. I said nothing of the sort. No, you were very explicit about the details, about the mask that the figure was wearing, and the, and the amount of piss that you let out in your underwear that night, and the blood that splattered over you when he was shot. Enough! Shut up, woman! You're making all this up! That will do! Mr. Trevor! Mm, yes? You refuse the account just given by Madame Two Spells. I have no recollection of ever saying those things. Come on, do you really expect us to believe you? Control yourself, counsel. I will not permit baseless accusations in my courtroom. Right. Under the circumstances, I think it's best that you supplement your testimony with a statement to clarify your position on this witness. V very well. And this is where we present the camera. Okay, apparently we have to go into, into uh, deeper detail. Okay. Hold it. Ah, uh, yeah, it's this one, I believe. That young woman being down to spells, of course. Precisely. I must say, I didn't expect to run into her again like this ten years later. As I have explained, I went by the name published in the article and comes out, I found the man. Yes, the article in the Daily Circus, I think you said. I was a poor student with barely a penny to my name at the time. And the young lady put five pounds in front of me. So you really consented to having a waxwork of yourself made and gave permission for it to be put on display? I did. I should sell what little I had to sell, I concluded. Ah, uh, we. Oui. I remember now. I bet you something else from you that day, n'est-ce pas?
Uh, did you? I can't say I remember. What was it, madame? It's camera. Ah. Oh, yes. I made a point of taking it with me whenever I went, whenever I made an excursion into any cemetery. You took a camera with you, sir. To what end? To record the details of the bodies I disint disinterred. Hey, like I said, I was poor. I had to make do with creating my own born. I can't buy the born, so I make the born. It is the cycle of life. It's like when you make your own laundry detergent, or when you make your own salad dressing, you know, something like that. You gotta repurpose. You gotta take things with your own hands, or when you fix your own drain. But I had no intention of ever visiting a graveyard again after that night, so I sold it. Hmm, I see. But thanks for having monsieur. It is part of the special exhibit in my house of horrors. I am very meticulous about such details. It is the truth's best way. So speaking of which, if, if, if basically, if two spells is so picky about details, that makes me wonder, does she basically, does she, how far does she go with anatomy? Basically, now it makes things very interesting in terms of just how the body of itself is made, if you know what I mean. It would seem then, that this is the very camera Mr. Draper took with him to the Logate Cemetery on the night in question. Yes, interesting. Okay, there we go. I was getting one step ahead of myself. Da 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 da. Okay, as you can see. Objection. Boom. There we go. Mr. Draper, do you remember this camera? But that is the camera from that fateful night. Yes, we borrowed it from the House of Horrors. It's the camera you took with you to the cemetery that night, Mr. Trevor. And is that supposed to be a sig be significant? This kind of camera is rarely seen in our homeland, so my colleague and I were keen to examine it closely. We noticed that the lens extends forward on the end of some bellows. Like this. Hold it. What's that? There's just on, just on the bellows. It looks like a dark red stain. Ah. That's right. It's a rather conspicuous mark here on the bellows, in fact. Good lord, are you, are you suggesting? Yes, my lord. It would appear to be a splatter of blood. Something that could be confirmed with a simple chemical test. Isn't that right, Dr. Scythe? Well, answer that next time. Anyways, I really appreciate that you took a to watch this episode. You're a great viewer, and hope you come back for the next one. If you like this video, like, subscribe, comment, share, do whatever you want. And I'll see you next time. Bye.